Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV here in Zurich Precious Metal Summit Conference. Still going on, and it's my last interview for the first day. We are now here with Scott Melby, the Executive Vice President of Uranium Energy Corporation. Scott, welcome and good to see you again. Oh, Johan, it's great to see you. And uh, this is always a, a highlight of, of the late fall uh, to be here in Zurich. So. <laughs> Super. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I think we spoke the last time three or four weeks ago, I would yeah. say. But a lot happened again because with Uranium Energy, you brought out uh, the first Rough Rider yeah. estimate here. So, yeah, we're very excited. Uh, we completed a very extensive economic study on the Rough Rider deposit, which you recall we acquired by, uh, from Rio Tinto for 140 million. Um, the highlights of the of the study, which came out last week, are that uh, we have a um, NPV of about 950 million US uh, with a 40 percent uh, internal rate of return. Uh, on that project. So we have a billion dollar asset within our company that's probably valued in most decks at the 140 uh, million acquisition price. Uh, more importantly, um, the, the development uh, of this project, we uh, anticipate all in sustainable costs of $20.40 and a uh, capital cost of five five hundred and fifty million, roughly. This is not ISR development, it's Saskatchewan development, so those numbers are bigger than you've seen in Texas and Wyoming. But they're also going to come at a time when we're throwing off significant cash flows from the U.S. and uh, Texas and, and Wyoming mining operations. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> what could be a possible production meeting in pounds per annum? <coughs> yeah, what could so be licensed? Uh, the, the study uh, targeted uh, for the uh, 61 million pounds uh, mine life Uh, annual production rate of six to seven million pounds per year. So that uh, would be a significant mine. It's in the very infrastructure-rich Athabasca, eastern Athabasca Basin, proximity to roads, airports, uh, existing construction uh, facilities uh, in, in that uh, part of the basin. Absolutely. Even if I extrapolate some inflation <laughs> into that, when it would go in production, let's say $25 per pound, that would be outstanding. Yeah, no, it is. And, and listen, it's not going to come on tomorrow. But in that 2030 time frame where we desperately need new mine developments, yeah. and uh, we've said all along, I think the biggest beneficiaries of the current market dynamics and the geopolitics that are going on is, is the United States uh, and Canadian uh, uranium industries. I think Saskatchewan um, will grow well beyond its current fleet of mines, which are world class. And obviously, uh, you know the, the the progress we're making down in Texas and Wyoming. So it's a really exciting time for us. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and also for us as a shareholder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm a shareholder of your company, of course. Yeah. Um, how is the production going? Because we are now four weeks again further. Yeah. So we uh, restarted uh, production in an ISR setting. That means injecting sodium bicarbonate into the well fields. We're now shipping loaded resins to the irrigary plant and building up those uh, in-process stockpiles and looking to <clears throat> dry and drum yellow cake by the end of the year, mm -hmm. probably then make our first shipments uh, early early in the new year and begin to get cash flow again yeah, from, from Wyoming. We love so, cash flow. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we get <laughs> a lot of questions from our viewers mm -hmm. um, regarding the spot price in Eurasia. Mm -hmm. Then you look at... Uh, the deficit in the market, then you look at the contract market, that all makes no sense. So yeah. What's going on there? Yeah, it, uh, it, it's actually got an, uh, a, a good explanation uh, for a change. We can uh, really point to an inventory of about 2 million pounds that was overhanging the market from a company called Anu, which was launching in Kazakhstan to be an alternative to Sprott and Yellow Cake, a physical uranium trust. Uh, the company didn't move forward and list as planned, so the inventory had been overhanging the market. Mm -hmm. But we we are hearing uh, that that material might have cleared even today, for a matter of fact, on, on that. So um, I think that was just a real, I think a micro small wave impact on what is otherwise a very positive long wave uh, trend. So, um, you know, if it's impacted the uranium equities, it's a great opportunity to jump in and buy. I think it did hold equities back quite a bit uh, over the first half of the year. Um, but of course, offsetting that are the incredible news on AI and data mm -hmm. centers and demand for nuclear. Almost every couple of days, we're mm -hmm. seeing more uh, more uh, talk about small modular advance and large reactors. So yeah, uh, yeah if this is a pause, uh, jump in and take advantage of it. 
Absolutely. Are you jumping in? Are you buying? <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, um, I, uh, I I made some purchases uh, recently uh, on on that dip, and uh, I think I'm already up eighty percent from purchases I made uh, as recently as September. So yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Super. Um, How can we understand the contract market? Because uh, I, I knew in the first half, I think it was only 50 million pounds approximately. Now yeah. there are talkings that we are closer to 90 million pounds, but it should be 130 to maybe 160 million oh, yeah. pounds for the yeah. replacement. It should be so, higher than that to and, be and replacement levels. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I heard also Cameco is still short of 2 million pounds. They have to buy until year end. Yeah. I was just reading that. I hope it's yeah. true. And uh, so that, that looks to me like, yeah, there are only six weeks left in that year. Yeah. How, how does that match? Well, last year was a big long-term contracting level, and that was quite encouraging. And so it was a little alarming to see the utilities buying less in the long-term market this mm -hmm. year than last year. But I think a lot uh, of that had to do with the um, enrichment and conversion okay. markets being very tight. And also some utilities trying to interpret how the Russian uranium ban in the United States plays out for their company. Are they going to get a waiver? Yeah. Are they going to have to replace those pounds or not? And also, I think there's just human nature that says, okay, over the you know course of this year, we saw uranium go to 106, but then it falls back to 76. And some utilities may think, oh, everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uranium going down and, and maybe not as urgent uh, to, to contract in that space than the conversion enrichment. I think that's going to change very rapidly. And I think what utilities are going to see when they get back to the market is a, a lot of the available mine production that they would like to contract for long term is now become fully committed. And so it's a game of musical chairs. The chairs are filling up and there's a lot more demand uh, that still needs to be filled. And that's even before hyperscalers, data mm -hmm. centers and this SMR mm -hmm. wave that yeah. will hit towards the end of the decade. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Last question. We had the election. Now we know yeah. Mr. Trump made it. Yes. Yeah? And he has, I think, Congress, Senate, he won the whole thing, I would say. Uh, yeah? yeah, it was so, uh, uh, Which is convincing. good because it gives, uh, in that sense, stability for the ruling. Yeah. But on the other hand, I'm interested, how do you rate now, uh, let's say, the influence or the effects on uranium industry in the U.S.? Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> with Rough Rider, you are on the forefront with mm -hmm. the next big project because it's really needed. Yeah. yeah, You can deliver into the U.S. That's not a problem from Canada. Yeah. Uh, from Canada, you are a U.S. producer. Yeah, So how do you see the benefits or how do, how do you see the thing now? Yeah, so um, with, with President Trump and his next administration, um, and he's been talking about it quite a bit on the campaign trail, and now um, you know we'll put it, uh, these plans in, into place, but it's all about American energy dominance. In the last administration, we talked about American independence, energy independence. Now it's energy dominance. What that means is the U.S. intends to produce enough energy, and in the electric sector, that means a heavy reliance on natural gas and nuclear um, to produce so much of that that we have a, a, a surplus of, of gas and, and uh, LNG products that can be transported and sold to Asia and Europe. And so not only fulfilling our own needs domestically, but able to supply our allies with abundant uh, energy sources. And uh, uh, Trump was very supportive of the nuclear industry in his last administration. Um, no indication that that's changed. And in fact, I think with some of his uh, close uh, advisors in the form of uh, Peter Thiel and Elon Musk, who have explained to him the importance of nuclear power to meet the demand for data centers yep. driven by AI, he gets uh, that we have an energy issue. It's not just clean energy transition yep. anymore. It's just energy transit. We yep. need more energy in the Definitely. United States, and nuclear and natural gas are going to be the big winners. So it looks like that we have a bright, shiny future for you, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, yes. it's... Uh, in my 41 years, I don't think I've ever seen uh, this kind of uh, thesis come together. And, uh, you know, for Uranium Energy Corp, now it's time to to get to business and, and produce uranium yeah, and, and uh, increase those cash flows in the coming years. So it's uh, exciting times. Fantastic. I was here ready to rumble. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Super. Scott, thank you very much. Look forward to that. 
I'm sure you have UAC shares. <laughs> yeah, lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Me too. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much, yeah. Scott. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Scott Melby, the executive vice president of Uranium Energy Corporation. And you heard it. Fantastic numbers from Rough Rider from the first economic estimate here. That really looks fantastic. Of course, this is a project by 2030, maybe 2032. But this is not a problem because the company is already in production and they have a growing production from ISR in the US. So they are, yeah, from the first step now, the, one of the largest really uranium suppliers for the U.S. nuclear industry. And as Scott said, completely right, we really need a lot of more power because of all those data centers, electromobiles, etc. And solar is nice, wind is nice to have, but you need the base load. And the base load without CO2 is nuclear. So from that perspective, don't forget the SMRs. Uranium is hot, uranium is great, and uh, really make sure you are in. Uranium Energy is a great company. I am in. Check it out. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Zurich.